the fact that I'm here is a bit of a miracle. And I don't mean here on the podium. I mean here on Earth. My mother was diagnosed as the fifth case in Mexico with a rare condition that prevented her from having babies. But thanks to heroic strangers, scientists, doctors, nurses, and lab technicians, a baby was carefully held into existence. That baby was me. I am here thanks to the miracle of science and the passion of strangers. And because of that, I've always felt an enormous responsibility to create medical miracles for others. I studied robotics and began doing projects in healthcare. As I was visiting rehabilitation centers in Mexico to understand the needs of patients with motor disorders, I met a child with cerebral palsy, a neurological condition that affects the control of muscles and the most common motor disability in children. I learned that in order to walk, this child needed to be fitted with orthotic devices, but his family wasn't able to find the money in time. And now, it was too late. He won't be able to walk, ever. I feel disgusted to live in a world whose systems and institutions allow for this to occur. That day, I decided I was going to develop medical technology to lower the access barriers and ensure that anyone who needs a medical device can get it, whatever their socioeconomic status. <laughs> After a lot of studying, hard work, and teaming up with brilliant people, I'm now helping people to move again. People with spinal cord injury have been able to stand up from their wheelchair and walk thanks to a robotic exoskeleton I helped develop, 50 times cheaper than commercial ones. <laughs> Dozens of children with cerebral palsy have been fitted with orthotic devices at a fraction of the usual cost and time, and are now walking, thanks to the digital fabrication platform developed by my startup, Prothesia. <laughs> and now, I'm investigating how to control paralyzed muscles using genes and light at MIT. The work of my organization, Rover Labs, is very similar to Guillermo's. I was in my fourth year of medical school when I first saw an upper limb amputee without any physical aid to overcome his disability. I started researching prosthetic devices and gathering a team of experts such as engineers. But I soon realized that I personally needed to understand. So I went back to college for a master's in biomedical engineering. Armed with new knowledge, ideas, and a transformed team, we are now on the verge of making affordable 3D-printed bionic hands produced in Tanzania to meet local need. Our innovation uses residual muscle signals from the amputee and translates these feeble electrical signals into hand motion by varying its speed and direction. Using 3D printing lowers the cost of production immensely and makes the hand easily customizable. This is very well suited for use and production in a developing country like Tanzania, where the per capita index is just under $1,100. There are more than one million people living with a disability in East Africa. 10% of these need 
upper limb prosthetic devices. And so far, there is nowhere for them to get one. We are simultaneously trying to develop 3D printed sockets for the bionic hand by 3D scanning the stump to provide a fully integrated service that is under our control. This will ultimately allow us to provide service to people living in remote areas without physically being there. Two months ago, Atish and I were introduced by email to write this joint speech, and our chats led to a collaboration. Together, we will 3D scan patients' limbs using just a smartphone camera, design orthotic and prosthetic devices using algorithms and virtual doctors in a single computer, and fabricate the devices using 3D printing. We will start in our two countries of Tanzania and Mexico, and over time, develop a decentralized network of doctors, makers, and funders that transforms the way medical devices are created and delivered globally. We end by saying, start collaborating. Find partners and build networks while you are at this summit. People who need prosthetic devices will gain because the two of us are sharing knowledge and experience, pooling systems and strategies. And the communities you serve will benefit when you have conversations and the ideas begin to flow. The power of one young world? If two strangers from Tanzania and Mexico can work together to benefit amputees, what can you do? What, what difference, difference will you make? make?